If you've been on Twitter in the last few days, you've probably seen that Jon Stewart is back. Nice. But if you're on my side of Twitter, you may have seen, or for the first time heard, of the name Niji Sanji. Niji Sanji, which I'll be shortening to just Niji throughout this video because big words are hard, is a VTuber agency owned by a bigger company named Any Color Incorporated. Hi again, guys, and as of late, Niji has been in the Lava Ridge hot tub waters, under scrutiny from every angle an eye can physically see. All of this stemming from a former member of their roster, named Selen Tatsuki when she was a part of Niji, and now going by Doki Bird as an independent creator who owns their IP. I will be getting into the details, but the fallout of the situation is genuinely unlike anything I've ever seen. And if you're a long-time Quite viewer, you know I've been around the block of situations like this. Fair warning for those unfamiliar, this situation gets into some deeply sensitive territory. Stuff like depression, bullying, attempts on your own life, as well as other very sensitive topics. So please do write by yourself and use discretion while watching. But on February 5th, 2024, Selen, or Doki, I'll be calling her Doki throughout most of this video, was publicly terminated from the VTuber agency she was signed to, the aforementioned Niji Sanji. They released an official statement as to why, with a whole lot of words on it, that I will prove I can read not long from now. But as part of her termination, the Selen Twitter account was set to private, and every video she'd ever released to the Selen Tatsuki YouTube channel was wiped. And while that's not really unique to this situation, and is pretty standard for creators leaving VTuber agencies, I still think it's a pretty fucking heavy move to make. Only three minutes after that termination notice dropped its nutsack on everyone's Twitter timeline, Selen, now going by Doki at Doki Bird, a title which she owns the right to, made a tweet saying that she wouldn't be muzzled any longer. In it, she claimed that she had been hospitalized recently for an attempt on her own life, one that was a result of reaching a breaking point from a toxic environment and bullying she says she endured during her time at Niji Sanji. Doki claims she requested to leave the company on more amicable slash neutral terms on January 20th. But no specifics were revealed here about her attempt to leave at that time. In the wake of this, there was a Battlefield 4 Levolution outpouring of support for Doki. The dam broke and people showed out in droves. Doki got 13 million views and 155,000 likes on that one tweet. Niji's original letter of termination got ratioed and stunted on with nearly as many retweets as likes, which on Twitter usually means most of those retweets were quote tweets dunking on the original. And the replies to that tweet were stuffed big and round with support of Doki. Slate and Niji for their perceived handling of the situation. Any Color, the parent of Niji Sanji English, got their stock price mollywopped, dropping 4% after all this went down. This was consequential enough that Goldman Sachs, yes, the investment firm, sent out one of their gay little market fluctuation reports talking about it. They had to detail to some octogenarian Wall Street fucks that the stock was dropping because a VTuber got dropped. Goldman Sachs had to comfort the investors and rub their shoulders saying that the financial consequences would be minimal overall. Because of how little of any color's earnings come from Niji Sanji's English-speaking branch. But still, investors were concerned enough by it that on February 7th, two days after the official termination notice, any color issued a statement with official ass titling, only to have two lines of text. The important one being, the impact of this decision on our financial results will be negligible. This wording did not help them for shit. With everything folks were seeing, it gave off the impression that Niji Sanji saw the talent that worked with them as meat and not real people. This fed into allegations Niji has had slingshotted at them more than once of being a black company. If you don't know, black companies in Japan are essentially companies that work their employees to the bone until all the marrow has been excavated out. A black company is one that doesn't follow labor laws and ruthlessly exploits their employees. Allegations of certain groups in the VTubing space being black companies are not new and extend far beyond the scope of this situation. The more public-facing consequences of this, though, have been staggering to me. I've really never seen anything like it. On February 12th, Niji Sanji released multiple videos as responses to the situation, which I will also dig into later. Jeez, my to-do list for this video keeps getting longer. But people did not respond well to those responses at all. Within 24 hours of their release, nearly 200,000 subscribers had been lost between all the channels associated with Niji Sanji's English branch. It is unlike anything I've experienced in my time on YouTube, which is most of my life, and especially during my time doing this as a job. These days, ecosystems of creators this big really don't exist like they used to. The last time I can think of the fallout from controversy being this widespread was when Machinima collapsed into a black hole, pulling all the creators signed to Machinima 
uh, with them into the supernova to burn up together. But here, rising from those ashes like a phoenix is a bit harder, because creators associated with Niji Sanji have that affiliation front and center in their branding. Branding, which belongs to Niji Sanji, making a fresh start separate from the company while maintaining your audience a lot harder than for the folks who fled the sinking Machinima ship. I don't think it's a secret that I got my start on YouTube covering drama or flavor of the week shit. It was honestly flavor of the day. When I was getting started, if I could put Logan Paul in a title, that was a good enough reason to make a video. But in the last few years, I have rarely taken my head out of the sand to talk about some shit that's happening in the moment. This whole shebang, though, strikes me personally as unique, both in the circumstances surrounding it, but also in how it relates to me. I don't bring it up on this channel much, but I personally have been a VTuber coming up on five years now. For those of y'all who follow the second channel, quote, you know I'm on my second VTuber model. It's 3D, it's got hand tracking. Whenever I stream, it's the only way I represent myself. I'm all in. I've been at it for a while, and I'm more entrenched in the space than I ever meant to when I started. Fuck tons of the people I know and collab with today are VTubers, and I only know them because I'm actively in the space myself. And when chatting with my fake non-flesh friends, we often talk about how VTubing is huge these days. Much bigger than the niche it occupies you think would be. <laughs> it's international, it's multi-language, and it's worth billions of dollars. But despite all that, it's still an incredibly insular and isolated culture on the internet. There will be some reality leaks like the occasional collab a face cam chud might do with a VTuber, but VTubing is a medium in a unique position all on its own. In some of the same ways being a YouTuber or content creator was seen as weird and new only a few years ago. But I think it's one a lot of people can understand the appeal of if it's framed to them in the right way. Like some of the best clips going out over the last week have been the SpongeBob VTuber rig during the Super Bowl. Like that, that shit's great. But I think a part of that isolation is because of the inherent differences in how VTubers approach their content than people who put their face out there. It's pretty much a given that almost any VTuber you watch hides their face. They'll play a character where some people never break that character. A character that often comes with their own detailed fictional lore. They'll have different outfits that people are chomping at the bit to see. They have some of the strongest and longest running inside jokes you'll see in an internet community, with those communities being very, very tight-knit. There's genuine history around the evolution of a given creator, usually, and so much more to go with it. There is a lot to it, and having said all that, as a guy who hides his face and says he's a floating hoodie with no legs, which I am, it might seem pretty obvious how I might find that appealing. <laughs> it has probably the highest potential for self-expression I've ever experienced being a content creator, and self-expression is what made me and a lot of people want to be creators to begin with. That said, despite all its unique quirks, VTubing is still very much a part of the same industry that we got going on in the fleshier side of things. As creators, VTubers and normal flesh people all interact with the same mechanisms to get attention and pay our rent. And one thing I find myself coming back to when talking to virtual friends I've made through virtual tubing is that it feels like VTubing as an insular and distinct culture is experiencing all of the different types of controversies and traumas, ones the rest of content creation has had years to go through and learn the ins and outs of on an elevated time scale. Shit moves fast if you're a VTuber. You've got every flavor of person-to-person -person beef you can imagine, and right now we're dealing with probably the most high-profile fallout of a creator and their management VTubing has ever experienced. Something that's happened in droves and other places throughout my time on YouTube. And with that in mind, this is high-profile in a way VTubing hasn't really experienced before. The situation is cater class. It's broken containment to the wider news cycle in ways that VTuber-centric situations almost never do. It's gotten on the radars of folk who cover general ongoings of the creator community. It's been getting articles at the ash by Dexerto, and when they make an article on something, you know it's because they think they'll get eyes on. It's not often my two worlds rub their butt cheeks together like this, and the way it has is very intriguing to me. There's legal shit involved, with some folks unable to say certain things because of Japan's weird defamation laws, as well as people just tapping out because this situation is emotionally draining in a way that VTubing hasn't seen this viscerally before. On top of that, this is a rapidly developing situation. Quite frankly, I do not have all the info to make a definitive judgment on this situation. I certainly have opinions, my ego demands it, but I'd have a hard time telling you I was certain about any of them considering how much I don't know. While I've sat myself in the VTuber swamp more than most of the people on my side of the internet, as a result, I know that I don't know a lot. And this video is liable to be outdated maybe even a fucking hour after it gets posted. That's how fast new information feels like it's been coming out about this whole thing. Doing my best to figure out how the fuck we got here and talking about the information we've got our hands on now are the only things I can really do with some level of confidence. I'm gonna be walking you through the timeline of events the best I can, but it's a bit of a web. Some of the dates will be out of order as some information I'm trying
kind of rub on your eyeballs will make more sense as to why it's relevant if I give you certain pieces of context first. So, like I said, the inflection point for all of this going public was on February 5th, 2024, about a week and a half ago now. This was when Niji Sanji dropped their official termination notice of Cell and Tatsuki. In it, Niji Sanji said Doki had breached a set of rules that all Niji EN members agree to when joining the organization, and she had done so several times. I just want to point out, for whatever goddamn reason, Niji Sanji exclusively refer to their creators as livers. It confused the little poo out my butthole. When people were quoting them on Twitter saying that term, I thought they meant, like, liver, plural. It's like, how much are you drinking that you need to hire a roster to do all the alcohol processing? Until I realized they just picked a weird word for creators. I I'm not calling them that shit. I'll say streamers. <laughs> but the relevant straw that paralyzed the camel for Niji was a rule stating that before releasing any content, a creator had to secure the rights to any assets included in a given work, and that these approvals needed to be secured and communicated to Niji Sanji through proper channels. Notably, this also included getting the consent of other members associated with any color, meaning other VTubers in Niji Sanji had to approve of their likeness or character appearing in that content, even if it was being posted by a fellow Niji Sanji creator. The piece of content in question was a music video that Doki had made for release around Christmas time. Niji claims they only received the video for review on December 24th Japanese Standard Time, and upon looking it over, found that not all of the assets included included in the music video had been cleared by their respective rights owner. They said they made Doki aware of this sometime on December 25th, JST. Niji claims that despite the warnings that not all the rights had been cleared, Doki still chose to upload the video on December 26th, JST anyways. That video had a short life, though, lasting only a few hours before it was privated shortly after. The same day, Doki, on the Selen Tatsuki Twitter account, tweeted that the song had been privated by management. She said it bummed her out as a lot of money and effort was put into that music video, and encouraged others to re-upload the video. That way, Dragoons, which is what she calls her fans, had some way of still listening to it. In their termination notice of Doki, Niji said that the video was privated as a temporary hold until all the rights could be secured to the assets in the video, at which point it would be reinstated. People took issue with this, specifically in the community notes. The music video Doki released was a cover of the song Last Cup of Coffee by another creator, Lily Pichu. Shout out to Umfi. It's been well documented that the rights for the song were secured well in advance, with Lily Pichu publicly stating she had approved and made Niji directly aware of her approval as far back as August 2022, over a year in advance, which made a lot of people take issue with the reasoning that Niji Sanji gave. However, I think it's important to mention that this might not have been the only factor at play. Within the music video for the song, there are a lot of visual elements that could have been a mitigating factor here. It could have been anything from, like, the stock images to the galaxy visuals or the promo images on the billboard at one point. I'm not really sure that those were the reasons at all, but the one that stuck out to me was that the likenesses of dozens of VTubers were included in the music video. If Niji Sanji is to be believed, part of their approvals from rights holders that Doki would have purportedly agreed to includes getting the consent of other talent in Niji Sanji for their likeness to be featured in content. This would have required every VTuber whose likeness showed up in the music video to give permission. And if Niji are telling the truth about being given two days before Nikki posted the video, I believe that to be a nearly impossible timeline to secure all those relevant rights. Let me be very clear here, if this is the reason, it's not a policy I agree with. I think it would be a necessary bureaucracy up the asshole and reeks of corporatism. Nor would it excuse any of the alleged treatment Doki claims to have gone through during her time at Niji Sanji. I just want to clarify that there were likely more rights holders at plays than just Lily Pichu approving the song to get covered. And if we're going to talk specifics of the situation, I feel like it's important to be clear on what those specifics are. This was the instance that kicked the kid off the bridge, where Niji Sanji cited parts of Doki's tweet as being inflammatory. Niji states Doki had omitted context by saying management had privated the song, and that telling fellas to re-upload the song if they wanted breached Niji's clause on guidelines for secondary creation. I don't know the specifics of that clause, but I gotta admit, when you're with an agency like that, telling people publicly to re-upload the video if they want is a ballsy move considering the circumstances. According to Niji, though, this instance was the culmination of several infractions Doki had made in the past of the rules she had agreed to when signing with Niji Sanji in July 2021. Some of the details of these prior situations were revealed in a 15-minute live stream featuring other members of Niji Sanji. In that stream, they spoke on the situation, and I'll dig into it not long from now, the list grows ever longer, as well as details revealed in other sources. Among these situations, though, was an art competition that Doki ran in May 2023, where her fans got to design outfits for her character. The winner would then have the outfit they designed christened as an official outfit for the Cell and Tatsuki character. The contest apparently had a lot of behind-the-scenes friction which Doki talked about some of publicly.
publicly. She said that five designs would be picked and that each one would be rewarded with 1,000 USD apiece out of her own pocket, though that only one would be selected as an official outfit. She said that she had to fight with the company to hold the contest at all, and fight even harder to be allowed to give out prizes to the winners. Doki asserted her reasoning for this was because of her strong support for artists during her time at Niji Sanji. Other pieces in the alleged pattern come from Vox Akuma, probably the biggest streamer at Niji Sanji English that he made on that live stream I mentioned earlier. Vox says that Doki had similar situations like this regarding a voice pack release in May 2023 and a Fall Guys tournament she hosted in August 2023, where she made tweets following these situations that allegedly breached the activity rules as Niji Sanji calls them, where Doki was asked to delete tweets she made that were allegedly disparaging to Niji Sanji, one that could erode the reputation and trust viewers had in the company as a result. The other reason for termination Niji cited directly in their notice was allegedly that Doki had failed to pay creators she commissioned on time. This point received significant blowback, especially when individuals who Doki had commissioned in the past came forward and said that she was great to work with, and had paid artists out of pocket at times where Niji Sanji as a company was the one who was obligated to and failed, even though it wasn't her responsibility to do so. They also pointed out that there were other alleged failings on Niji's behalf, like failing to send NDAs multiple times. To clarify, I think it's genuinely dope that Doki was willing to do something like this. I take the artist here at their work. That said, as someone who pays several folk to work on my videos for a bunch of different things, the good experience one person had with a creator cannot speak for everybody they've ever worked with. There are times where through forgetfulness, being up to my eyebrows and stuff to do, or whatever it might be, I have been late on payments. And that makes a difference to the people whose lives depend on those payments. Being a few days late on what someone is owed can be the difference between them paying rent on time and getting charged a fee they can't afford because I took longer than I was supposed to. When I do fuck it up there, it's never out of malice, and even if Doki had failed to pay people she commissioned on time, which I don't even know if that happened, I don't think she would have done so out of malice. But it still matters. The stakes for Doki missing a payment are much higher than they are for me. She had a big brother Niji Sanji figure looming over her shoulder, and where I can usually remedy the issue by just sending the payment as soon as I realize that I missed one, she's in a tougher position where being late could have wider reaching consequences for the company she signed to. That scenario would be tougher for her than it is for me. But if it truly was a factor in the decision that led to her termination, the consequences of that action can't be underplayed and go undiscussed. That also includes if Niji played up the severity of these alleged situations to make Doki seem worse and the artists she paid more harm than they actually were. That is, if they even happened in the first place because we don't have any evidence of that. In their closing statements, Niji Sanji claims they spent a great deal of time trying to negotiate with Doki and her lawyers, where Doki's team supposedly threatened to hold Niji Sanji, as well as some streamers associated with the brand, legally liable. And that when they couldn't reach a compromise with Doki's team, they temporarily removed her access to Selen Tatsuki's social media accounts. They give an acknowledgement of the role Doki played during her time as Selen and building Niji EN to what it is now, but they say they believe her termination was the only real course of action they had given all the circumstances they had presented. As you know, this statement did not go over well. <laughs> and I can see a million percent why. No matter how substantive or correct their reasoning might have been here, it is presented in the most detached, sterile format possible. I feel like I'm walking through a cancer ward reading this. It, it smells like a shit an executive just took in a VIP bathroom. To me personally, this statement reads like it came from the mouth of a Japanese executive. One who just dropped the Martin Luther Protestant list of grievances that would explain terminating someone in the East, but that just doesn't fly here in the States. No one in the public gives a fuck about the contract breaches. If any of this is true, it fails to effectively touch on the harm that Doki's alleged actions would have caused to the real people involved. And if what they say is at all true, they completely blew the first impression and their strongest chance they had to make a succinct statement. As I mentioned, not three minutes after this post went public, Doki made a tweet on her now independent persona's account, saying that she wouldn't be silenced any longer. This was again where she made those claims she was hospitalized due to bullying in a toxic environment at Niji Sanji, and that she tried to leave on more neutral terms in late January. As you know, this led to an outpouring of support, and rocketed Doki's independent YouTube channel to over 500,000 subs in less than two weeks, some of the quickest growth any creator has had this year on YouTube. Public sentiment has pretty much been on Doki Bird's side ever since. Companies have cut ties with Niji Sanji in response to their alleged treatment of Doki. People have been celebrating her return as a now independent VTuber, folks are creating tons of fan art, and putting together cosplay almost immediately after the design had been revealed, and people were just generally excited to see her still kicking after everything she had been through in the week after the official termination notice. But it obviously doesn't end there, because on February 12, 2024, Niji Sanji 
released a dual set of response videos. One was on the channel of another Niji EN streamer named Alira Pandora, and the other was on the official Niji Sanji English YouTube account. It featured the CEO of Niji Sanji's parent company, Any Color himself, Riko Tazumi. That's the first of these two videos I'll be covering first. All in all, it's pretty boilerplate shit. He apologizes for any distress that may have been caused before apologizing for the wording used in that investor notice from earlier. He claims the intention was to address concerns they were directly getting from investors as to the stock price of any color going down from this situation. He says that the use of the word negligible was a result of poor translation, which, to be fair, is not a rare occurrence in the VTubing space. Language barriers are challenging. <laughs> Tazumi says that it unintentionally came off like any color devalued and dehumanized the talent working at the agency, as well as the fans who consume the content. He then promises they will do a better job of communicating in English, as well as reaffirming their commitment to creator well-being and the value they place on the creators who make the content. He addresses the allegation that Niji fostered a toxic environment that enabled streamers to be bullied and harassed, and that their mental health was not properly accommodated for, saying that the company takes full responsibility for this. Tazumi claims that not only any color staff were receiving mean comments because of this whole thing, but the streamers at Niji Sanji as well. He says that company decisions resulted in stress in streamers' lives, and they don't take that lightly, and they will be more active in their communication with streamers about this in the future. He announces several new systems will be implemented that talent can use to voice their concerns while still being able to stream and do so in conditions that enable better mental health. And I will say, it feels like the concerns he's addressing here are more related to things being said as a result of the situation with Doki, and less the claims of a toxic environment fostered within Niji Sanji from beforehand. Which of these matters deserves to be addressed the most directly slash is the most substantiated is up for debate. There's a section about the lack of Niji EN content offerings. To me, the only relevant part is an event they delayed to focus on this situation more directly, and the video ends with Tazumi apologizing on behalf of any color again. Not just for this, but also other situations they didn't give proper attention to in the past. Tazumi states that livers are irreplaceable, not just as business partners, but as the most important people in the company. Essentially, that they are the laborers that lay the foundation the company's built on. The far more consequential video, though, is the one on Alira Pandora's channel. It was a live stream that only lasted 15 minutes, where the only visuals were a black screen for almost the entire thing, and she was joined by two other Niji English streamers, Vox Akuma and Ike Evelyn, to speak on this situation. I think them being the ones to deliver this message is crucial. Alira says that after internal discussion that she volunteered her channel for the purpose of that stream, and all three of them claim that what they're saying in the stream is their own words and thoughts, but a lot of people are skeptical of this. For one, a lot of folk don't think any of this should be getting said through the talent at Niji, but rather only through a PR person. And on top of that, these are the only three Niji English-speaking members who have spoken on this at all. Like I said, Vox Akuma is the biggest streamer at the agency, so him being involved with the public statement in some form is no small thing. Getting into the meat of the video, Alira clarifies that anything said in the stream was approved by lawyers and any color, and is at most the personal opinion that each streamer has formed on their own. She says because of how sensitive the situation is, they can only say so much, but that they take the whole thing very seriously. Alira claims that any color received a document from Doki's lawyers that supposedly contained the personal information of several streamers in Niji Sanji. She also says the document had untrue, harmful claims, and the streamers at Niji were apparently under the impression that under certain circumstances, this document might be made public. In regards to the song cover in December last year being removed, Alira said several Niji Sanji members reached out to Doki trying to genuinely understand the situation as they were in the dark about the whole thing. Kind of like the response video, because it's a black screen. Please become normal. They claim when they found out about Doki's suicide attempt, their first concern was her well-being, and that they exhausted all means of communication to make sure she was okay, and that they did their best to be kept appraised of events as things progressed. When Vox comes on to speak, he stands by the narrative that Doki has a pattern of not complying with rules she had agreed to when joining, and that when management would communicate with her properly, she would respond by tweeting disparaging things about Niji. In regards to allegations of bullying, Vox's claims make me think this is specifically over the song cover situation, and he defends the way that he and other people reached out to Doki, claiming that they were asking what the deal with her tweet and the song was in good faith. That he and other Niji Sanji streamers genuinely felt that her handling of the situation was uncalled for and reflected badly on the rest of Niji Sanji. That the whole thing was a genuine attempt at communicating with her. The main new information he drops are things regarding the document, as well as another would-be bombshell if true. Vox says he has reviewed the doc thoroughly, and in it, it revealed that supposedly Doki had secretly recorded a conversation she and Vox had over a year ago. This conversation 
conversation was allegedly in regards to a tweet Vox had made being critical of Niji Sanji in the past, but that he wasn't reprimanded for like Doki had been for her own tweets. Apparently, the conversation was meant to serve as evidence that Niji had favoritism towards certain creators. Vox claims he followed up with his manager on the circumstances that led to him not being reprimanded for the situation, where he was told that Niji chose not to have him delete the tweet as to not raise tensions even higher, as the situation at that time was already tense enough. Despite this, though, Vox claims he has been asked to delete tweets in other situations before, and that it's generally understood that these things happen. You get asked to delete a tweet that maybe you didn't think through, do what they ask you to do, you move on, and it's not really a big deal. Finally, Vox says that Doki claims she was being terminated in May 2023, when in the throes of her multiple supposed violations that month, where Vox claims she was actually only ever issued warnings. Vox says that he was so angry on her behalf that if she did get terminated, he would have graduated with her in solidarity. Something that, if true, would have had huge consequences for Niji. Again, he is their biggest English-speaking streamer. But he says that finding out his anger was built on incomplete information saddened him, and he claims that Niji streamers have always had the option to graduate when they want to, and they can do so on amicable terms, and that Doki mentioned planning to several times, but always reneged. When Ike comes on, not much new information is really shared. He more or less reiterates that seeing the content of that document made him and others who had seen it rethink their entire time knowing Doki. He gives another disclaimer not to harass or send hate to anyone, despite the high-running emotions. And he requests that viewers don't ask streamers at Niji for more info on this as it's gone past what they are willing to share, and that it's a matter for the private and for the lawyers if need be at this point. Regarding the contents of the document, several people raised concerns that sharing it with the streamers at Niji may have been legally questionable, as it was said to contain personal info regarding Doki and was supposedly only ever intended to be seen by lawyers. Niji said, after stringent texts, they had found they had not breached any confidentiality agreements and had not broken any laws with their actions. <laughs> now, a lot of people dogged on Niji as basically patting themselves on the back, a sort of, I looked into what happened and found myself not guilty, but I do think some context is important here. It is in Niji Sanji's best interest to make sure internally they aren't screwing the pooch here, and a thorough legal review to make sure they are in the clear would be necessary. If they really did fuck up here, that would more than likely be ammo for Doki in a potential lawsuit or legal action, a resource they might not want to hand over to her if possible. I I'm not qualified to tell you if they broke the law or not, especially international law. I just wanted to say that them reviewing the legality themselves might not just be them giving themselves the pass as to not take responsibility. There could be some level of truth to it. The truth is, I just don't know. Doki made a statement on the document giving context as to its creation, also confirming its existence. She said that after her statement on February 5th, she really had no plans to comment on the situation again and had been ready to move on. That she was saddened to have this wound reopened again and have to talk to her lawyers. She claims the document was written to give an overview of her situation to her lawyer so he could get an understanding of how things happened from her perspective. I can relate to this as I had to do something similar when my own situation last year reared its head. And she says it was written in the darkest place her mind has ever been and with the impression that it would never be public or shared with anybody but her lawyer, as it was filled with not just other streamers' personal info, but also her own. After not getting a response from Niji's lawyers for around a week, though, Doki said her lawyer suggested sending the document to Niji's lawyers to hopefully get things moving. She confirms that the recording Vox mentioned actually exists, but claims that it was never intended to be used as a gotcha or as evidence, but rather as a test recording ahead of a collab between two people that just got left over. Doki says it's never been used in a legal setting, but apologizes to those it affected anyways. Doki claims she just wanted to move on from all this after making her initial statement on February 5th, but the whole thing's been dragged out in front of the whole world now, and that the termination notice had actually been sent out less than two hours after she first sent that document to Niji Sanji. Doki acknowledges that communication was between lawyers in two different languages where a lot can be lost in translation. She says the situation is not black and white and to show empathy to all involved. Notably, Doki reveals she had not just one, but two suicide attempts, and recounts the story of how her parents found her in time. She says she doesn't reveal this info now for pity, but rather as a cautionary tale as to how no one should have to go through what she did. Doki says she won't be revealing further receipts or the full document in that statement, as it was never intended for the public to begin with. She says the only things she said in public have been in response to stuff that Niji's or others have said in public first, and that she plans to keep it that way moving forward. I have some questions about both accounts of the situation, a lot of which comes down to information we just don't have. In Alira's livestream, several instances of Doki's behavior were mentioned, stuff that was not being sourced from the document, which understandably has to remain private. But evidence was flashed on screen 
seen once during the stream. It was claimed Doki had said and done a lot of things where these occurrences of Doki's alleged behavior were never substantiated. In that video, it is being publicly claimed that Doki has done several things. There are several interactions not being sourced from the private document that are being put out there publicly. So I'm confused as to why evidence corroborating these situations weren't put out there. You're already claiming that something happened, so the confidentiality doesn't really apply. These aren't interactions that are sourced from the document that needs to remain private, and including evidence would just help corroborate the things you're saying. There's likely not documentation for all of the things they said it happens, but having no messages or receipts vouching for the things that these three are claiming Doki's done that led to those three streamers having the opinions they do now is unsatisfying to say the least. On the other hand, the explanation for the recording from Doki doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Outside of just not thinking about it at the time, I'm not sure why she wouldn't disclose that the recording was happening to the other party. Or if it was just a test for a collab, why it would be in this document meant for her lawyer at all. Operating phrase here being, I don't know. <laughs> it could very well be that when it was recorded, it really wasn't intended to be used in a legal sense, which Doki claims it hasn't. But by coincidence, it may have recorded a comment that could have been beneficial to her case, and she hadn't thought about that recording until it became relevant to her situation. In regards to the claim Vox made that livers can leave Niji Sanju whenever they want, it clashes with a statement that Doki made saying she tried to do just that on more neutral terms in late January, but wasn't able to. No one involved gives anything concrete to support their side for this specific instance. A lot of this could be held up in legal matters, but I don't have a way of knowing that. But like, Vox could show potential screenshots on screen of Doki saying she plans to leave Niji, especially since he claimed she planned to do so multiple times. Doki could share the communication of her trying to leave Niji, since she made it public info that she tried to. Either party could share the part of the contract where talent is either specifically disallowed from leaving Niji without prior approval, or that the talent can terminate the contract whenever. There is just a void of context or sources for a lot of what's being said here outside of testimony from both sides of the situation. Finally, regarding the catalyst that drove Doki to an attempt on her life. This situation, no matter how it unfolded, is undoubtedly tragic. And no matter what the context or the reasoning is for how she ended up in a spot where she felt like she had to take her life, it's something she should never have had to go through. It's a real fucking deep type of despair that I empathize a lot with. I'm not going to reiterate here, but some of y'all know I have my own history with that shit, so I really feel for that. I'm in no way trying to trivialize what she went through or cast doubt on the fact she went through it. I believe it's been well evidenced that she was actually hospitalized over an attempt. But in reality, regarding the details, we in the public have no idea what exactly happened there. Niji members claim they reached out to Doki over genuine concerns they had about behavior that affected them negatively, while Doki claims she was being consistently harassed by other streamers at Niji Sanji. But neither side has shown us what those interactions actually consisted of. Doki, at least, has said that she's trying to move on from this and won't be dropping evidence because she doesn't want to drag it out even further, which, fair enough. <laughs> My point is, we are just ultimately working off incomplete information from every angle we can look at this from. It is messy, it's complicated, and like Doki said herself, there are no winners in this situation at all. And I reckon for VTubing, this is going to be a traumatic scar that looms large over the space moving forward. I think my main takeaway from this is that it's a shame this is going to be a lot of people's first impression of VTubers, where their first look is the seedy underbelly, the toxicity that can fester in it, and the corporate shenanigans it can breed. And I just kind of fear that a lot of people will miss out on what I love about it so much as a tool of self-expression. I've met so many friends through VTubing that I respect a whole fucking lot, and am lucky to call my friends who do cool shit. It's a tool for self-actualization I've used a lot. It's genuinely helped with self-discovery and the ways you're able to express yourself. I'm just 3D hoodie guy on stream right now, but I've got plans to go bigger, go weirder in the future. And that's because I'm able to because of VTubing. I adore that I'm able to. It lets my brain run wild with ideas. I honestly feel like this situation is far from over. I don't know that we'll be privy to what happens next, but if my experience with legal situations is anything to go off of, the stress will continue for everyone involved, and there's a good chance it will drag out for ages, where the public may or may not learn more as time goes on. Ultimately, I just don't think we have complete information. I don't know a lot. <laughs> and in my experience, these things are helped when we as people are willing to slow down a bit and willing to let a situation just unfold a little more. To see what's happening and what will happen down the road if anything is still going to happen, and being willing to do that before making a call if we really even should be making one at all. Anyways, this has been quite, and god, I'm fucking tired.